but all right, check, check, see if you can hear us now.
Hi everyone. Welcome to our CHCH admissions live stream. My name is Lisa Pellrine and I'm the Director of Enrollment Management here at CHCH and this is my 18th year and I have two student ambassadors here to help us today answer your questions and I'd like for them to have an opportunity to introduce themselves as well. Um, my name's Sonia. I'm a current junior. I'm a boarding student from Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, and I participate in Cavalry. I'm one of the leaders, and I play volleyball and lacrosse. Hi, I'm Elena. I'm a senior this year at CHCH. I've been here since my freshman year. Uh, I'm a day student from Waltham, and I participate in theater. Great, thank you. Um, so I just wanted to give a brief overview about CHCH for those of you um, new to learning about the school. <laughs> so we're located 10 miles um, from Boston and we're a college preparatory um, co-ed school that um, offers a place where uh, students, um, we teach the way students learn. Um, we welcome a diverse group of students with various learning styles um, and help them develop self-confidence and academic success. Um, through our personal, personalized integrated learning. Um, students also have the opportunity to participate in our many different athletics, arts, as well as community service. Okay, um, so I just wanted to, before we start getting into questions, um, wanted to give an overview of what's going on in admissions right now. Um, so we've had a number of families this past fall attend our open houses in October and November, um, as well as many families on campus for their tours and interviews. Um, right now we are still booking appointments if you are interested in visiting campus, and our application deadline for first round is coming up on February 1st but there's still plenty of time to um, find out more about us. Um, and then if you are interested in learning more, um, our website is chch.org, and there's um, a button you can click on apply, and that goes through all of the admissions requirements and deadlines as well, but happy to get into more detail about those, um, those application pieces um, throughout this live webinar as well. Okay, um, so I have my um, colleague and friend here, Ben, off camera, who's going to be helping us um, with your questions and reading them to us for us. So, Ben, first question. The first question we receive is, which applications do you accept? Okay, so we accept a couple different options um, for applications. We want to make this as streamlined and easy for parents as possible. Um, so in addition to having our own online application, um, we also accept the common application. Um, it's the standard um, admissions online application, so it's called the SAO. That's through the SSAT organization, um, enrollment.org. Um, so many schools accept that. So, um, so if you don't want to fill out multiple applications at schools, um, that's definitely one that you could use. And I think that's a great thing um, if you are applying to multiple schools. Just a tip is to see what applications they do accept. So that way, um, you might not have to fill out as many as you might have thought. Next question. Does my daughter have to take the SSAT? Okay. Um, so for us, um, no, they don't. So the SSAT is the secondary school admissions test. And, um, you know, it's a, it's a very helpful test that many students take. But for us, um, as I mentioned in our introduction, we do have a number of students with um, different learning styles and different strengths. And um, oftentimes they'll have a neuropsych um, testing that's been complete. It, it includes a cognitive and achievement component. Um, so as long as that's within three years old, we would actually prefer that over an SSAT um, because it will tell us a whole lot more about our students' many strengths and how we could best work with them as well. All right, next question. Do you teach students structure and organizational skills if they choose not to sign up for the extra support? All right, so do we offer students extra structure and support if they don't take um, our SAS class? So just really quick, SAS is our skills and academic support program. Um, have you girls taken SAS during your time here? I haven't. You haven't? Yeah. I've taken SAS all three years, so okay. it's been super helpful for me. Great. Um, so our SAS class is actually incorporated into the class schedule. So like all of our other classes, it meets three times a week for 75 minutes. The only difference is it's four students per teacher, which is really nice to get that individualized attention. Um, you know, so through the admissions process, when the admissions committee is reading an application, if a student 
is admissible at that point, we would we would recommend whether or not they would um, need the SAS class. So that's part of the acceptance. They would get an acceptance contract as well as an SAS contract. Um, obviously, we're happy to, to give reasons why, but I would say about 90% of domestic ninth grade students are taking SAS and any new um, sophomore or junior who comes to the school. Um, so it's not uncommon. Um, however, if a student doesn't take SAS, there's still a lot of opportunity um, for students to be taught organizational skills, whether it's um, time management, prioritizing, writing assignments. Um, we have an advisory program um, where it's one of the cur current students' teachers um, is their advisor, and they meet once a week to go over online weekly progress reports and feedback from all of their classroom teachers. So there's no there's no hiding, and yeah. you know, you're <laughs> constantly getting you know good feedback from yeah. from their teachers. Um, but through that, they you know can help students um, structure a plan, and then the classroom teachers actually provide the structure for students. Um, so for example, and one of our um, World Civ One classes. Um, that teacher in particular does um, something called a four-step study plan. So, for example, when they have a quiz or a test coming up, um, Casey will kind of prioritize it for them and really give the students an opportunity to to um, gather resources that they need for that particular quiz. Um, step two would be, you know, gathering major notes related to the topics on that quiz. Um, step three would be, you know, teaching what you know to another student. So, for example. Example, Sonia would teach Elena what she I knows and vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that that way they have practice actually reviewing the material. Um, and then step four would be really identifying those areas that you really still don't feel as confident in. That way you can um, perhaps go see that teacher during office hours, which is built into the schedule as well. Um, so that's something that you know definitely would help students um, continue to learn different things. And as well as another example of that would be in our 10th and 11th grade English classes. Those teachers will work with students on how to use a graphic organizer um, to really give them opportunities to learn these skills on how to best structure their writing. Have you girls used a writing organizer before? Yeah, yeah that in class. Class. Yep. I remember doing that sophomore year. Yep. I mean, I I was using one in ninth grade as well. Mm -hmm. You know, Mr. McGuire's, and I mm -hmm. still use one now, so yeah. it's super helpful. Good. Um, so again, I think our ninth grade program really <coughs> you know, in addition to not taking SAS, I think the classroom teachers really, as well as our sophomore teachers and, and they're on, um, do a wonderful job of helping these students build their toolkit of what really works for them. It's not a one size all type of thing. Um, you know, so that way they can continue to use it year after year and hopefully when they go to college have these skills. So no matter what size college or university they're in, they're using those foundational skills to, to find success. So yeah, great. All right, good questions. Keep them coming. There was a two part to that oh, one, two too. Part. Can okay. add, so, yeah. can I ask the, um, the students on this one? Just so they want to know if classes meet you meet you where you are or if they are continually challenging you to, to improve. So, when you're in classes, so do you guys have anything, um, any answers on that? Yeah, so I think at first they will meet you where you are and then kind of assess and then take you, help take you to the next level. Yeah, and I definitely agree with that. Like, I feel like in the beginning of each year, since we do come back from like that long summer vacation, you know, classes, they start, you know, kind of where you picked off, or if it's a new topic, if it's a new science topic, <laughs> um, definitely you, you know, kind of start from the top. But I feel like now, especially as you get into the year, it's definitely challenging. Mm -hmm. Great. And our, um, one of our ninth grade teachers shared with me that, um, for example, in, um, in the history class, um, she, for a homework assignment, you know, they had to um, write an essay and she would have different options for those essay questions. And some of them were geared towards those students that really were able um, to, to be more challenged and, and discuss the topic in greater detail um, versus others in the class. So really differentiating and allowing students to have choice as well in homework, and I think that's nice too. Um, when you have homework, it doesn't just seem like busy work. Yeah. yeah. Um, that you have options and you know different types of you know different things to incorporate, whether it's something you know related to a current song or you know a different mm -hmm. movie or something like that or a yeah. podcast. So I think um, our teachers do a really good job of making homework, I would say, more exciting, as exciting yeah. as homework could get. Yeah. I would say like more exciting in you know, the homework sense, but also like it definitely applies to class. We always go over the homework, and it always like is related to whatever topic we're doing in that class. So it's it's useful to do. Yeah. And um, another example of that was um, in a geometry class that you know students when they were um, you know um, 
learning um, code agreement theorems and proofs. Um, those students who needed a review of that material, um, the teacher actually took those students and um, broke them up into a smaller group so they could have more time review reviewing that material while the other students who were ready to excel and um, continue on, um, they, were, they were working on a different project. So even within the class, depending on the topic, students can really um, have the opportunity to, to differentiate up as well and continue to be challenged. We also have um, a number of AP and accelerated courses in each content area. Um, and I think that's so, what's so cool about our, um, our environment that just because maybe one subject is a weakness for you, you might be in that next class in an English class and really be in that group that's able to be more challenged and excel. Um, you know, so it's, it's, you know, we're all humans and we all have our different strengths and weaknesses and that's really honored and celebrated here which I think is really nice that you know we're not all all the same yeah. um, you know so I think that's um, you know, really nice opportunity and you know we are we are a school of 180 um, so for our ninth grade classes those are about 8 to 10 and then the upper class is about 12 to 14 so our teachers really do get to know all of our students strengths areas we need to pay attention to their learning styles their interests both inside and outside of school um, so within that class size we're, we're teaching the same topic in multiple ways our class schedule is a little bit different, um, where all subjects only meet 75 minutes, three times a week. So during that 75 minutes, you're hearing um, the same topic, um, you know, you're seeing and doing it, talking about it. So mm -hmm. it's not just a lecture-based class. Um, do you girls want to talk about that a little bit more, about like the interactiveness versus when you were in public school, for mm -hmm. example? Or... I can go. Yeah. Um, so what I like so much about cl like classes at Chapel Hill is that like... <coughs> you know, as you said, like, it's not just geared towards one type of learner, like, it's not just auditory, it's always, you know, the teacher saying it with a PowerPoint, with a hands-on example, and always a class discussion, and I always say this, it's like, the class discussion helps me so much, because I see different people's understanding of it, and it kind of, like, widens my horizon with it a little bit, so that definitely helps me so much, mm -hmm. in the sense that, like, they're teaching in so many different ways. Yeah, I would say the class discussions are my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of the way that I like to learn. Um, so definitely history and English classes yeah. are my favorite because we get to do a lot of discussion and kind of you're learning and growing all together at the same time. So I think that has been a really amazing part of my time here. That's great. Um, and you mentioned, Sonia, just hearing so many different perspectives. Yeah. Um, we are a school, as I mentioned, of 180, but what's great is we have a day and boarding program. Um, so um, we have about 60% day, 40% boarding students, but even within that, um, we really do have a ritually diverse cultural environment. Um, we have about 20% um, students from around the globe, um, as well as students nationwide. So I think as far as really having a rich discussion in your classes and having just so many students coming from different parts of the world and their opinions mm -hmm. and thoughts and their their upbringing I think just adds another really cool layer in, in the classroom as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next question, Ben. Our next mm -hmm. question is, do you meet with the student and the parents for the interview? Yeah, so um, yes, we do. We, we require at least one parent to be here, we understand. Um, you know, in many households now, both parents are working, so if, if um, they both can't make it, that's okay, as long as there's one parent. Um, so we usually structure the um, campus visit um, about two hours. So you would have a student-led tour um, first for about 45 minutes, and Sonia mentioned the cavalry when we first started. So that's a, um, it's a, it's a student club on campus um, that works closely with the admissions office. You have to um, apply to be in it. Um, but these students are available to show families around and speak about their experience here at Chapel Hill. So we have a number of different students, whether they're day, boarding, came from public school or another feeder school, um, which is really cool. So, and um, you know, they've been tremendously helpful um, for us. And, you know, for us, you know, we, you meet admissions a lot, but I think it's important for families to really have some one-on-one -on -one time with the students to gain their honest perspective. You know, we don't, we train them to kind of give them the tour route, but we really want them to speak authentically about their experience and their stories here. So you'll yeah. get honest, honest answers. And, you know, we've, we've Having been here for so long, we've, we've heard and seen a lot, so, um, but that's a really cool part of it. And then following the tour, um, myself and my admissions team, one of us would conduct the interview. So we, we meet with the student first, and, you know, it's really a conversation, and it's an opportunity 
you know, for us to interview the student as much as it, you are interviewing us. It's about best fit. Um, so it's really just a conversation about what type of school you're looking for, um, just to go over what classes you're taking, your learning style, your interests, how you feel like you would contribute to our community and maybe our arts and athletics program. We really want to learn more about your passions as well. And then we'll meet with the parent or parents after that to recap um, our student interview and have an opportunity to answer questions and go into more detail. So I remember doing Sonia's yeah. interview a few years In ago. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so it's a really, I would say it's one of the most important parts of the admissions process yeah. and one of the most fun and engaging parts as well. It really brings the application to life. Um, it really gives us a chance to, you know, gain that personality and how a student might be a best fit for us at CHCH. So, yeah. And I think that also, like, just being on campus gives you a really good idea about, like, what kind of mm -hmm. school Chapel Hill is, and even, like, other schools. I think touring and the interview is probably, like, the most important part, you know? Yeah. You get to, like, walk around yeah. and just see the students, how they interact with each other. And, like, the, the teachers. teachers. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I will say we only do book appointments um, during... Um, the school week Monday through Friday when classes are in session because that is such an important part of who we are you know so you can really get to know the culture and climate here on campus and you know sure you can tour buildings and such but once you get to meet the people the students the teachers see classes in session um, I just think that's such a better opportunity to learn more about a school yeah I agree yeah um, and something I think both of you did was was a shadow day so we do always welcome students to come and spend the academic day here um, so we would once we have a better sense of the student and their interests and personality, we would pair them up with um, a student and shadow their classes for the day. Do you want to talk a little bit more about that experience? Yeah. Did you do so it? You did it, right? I did. Yeah. So I did one way back, yeah. <laughs> a couple years ago. I remember they paired me, I actually had two people, two different people I shadowed, um, that were involved in the theater program. Mm -hmm. So that was really great because I just got to connect with them on a level where we had common ground and something we were really interested in. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome to also see uh, just the classes they were taking and what it was like to actually have the a day in the life of like what it's yeah. like here. Yeah. Were you scared when you first heard 75 minute classes? You're like, oh my oh god, that's my gonna god. Be so I was so bit, yeah. a little bit. But then sitting in on a class, I was like, wow, that actually yeah. didn't take forever. Like it goes by and you get <laughs> yeah. used to it. Yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. Anything else to add? Um, I mean, going off of the 75 minute class, I always say this on tours. It's like when I heard the 75 minutes on my tour, I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's a long time. But like, since coming here, like, the 75 minutes does not feel like 75 minutes because, like, it's kind of the teacher's always doing something. It's a very interactive class. Like, they're never just like, you know, the teacher talking for the whole 75 minutes. There's always something that the students are involved in or we're doing projects, projects essays, Everything. whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the teachers are so like supportive, like if you need help on something, again, it's a great time to go and see them. So yeah. Yeah. Cool. Good. Thank you. You mentioned yeah. that you give tours. Is yes. It's good. You might, what's the Calvary like? So we were talking about that. Is yeah. There, so what, what's that group about? <laughs> um, so I joined Cavalry freshman year and, you know, at that point I was just like, you know, shadowing um, some tours, doing some shadow days and like, I kind of, my whole like motivation to join Cavalry was to kind of show people how much like just high school could change someone. Like for me, I know it was like literally a month in and I, I felt like a different person. Like my confidence went way up and like I just want to tell my story for other people so I can help them, you know, have the same experience or different but a good experience. <laughs> um, but Cavalry is a student run club, um, me and Elaine are both leaders. And um, it, we basically student ambassadors, so tours, we have open houses, open houses, panels, panels, questions. all of that, everything. Yeah, live stream, live stream. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right, next question. What type of students excel at CHCH? Yeah, I think um, I think because we we do have um, kind of a dynamic schedule where it's different where you really can't hide in a class yes <laughs> um i think it's important that you're on board with that and yeah. just really being a willing participant in the classroom um because we do teach in multiple ways mm -hmm. um you know students are required to be more engaged in in their learning environment mm -hmm. um as i mentioned you have weekly online progress reports that you go over with your advisor but your parents also get to, yes. get to see those the next later, day though. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you have time to fix whatever yeah whatever you need to um but you really can't hide here so yeah. i think um um, 
you know, students who are most successful are those that are able to engage with the adults on campus. Mm -hmm. I would always say that, you know, we have a great program here and we have teachers who teach fewer students, but they're doing so much more with them mm -hmm. from teaching to advising right. to coaching to the theater or arts or music program to living on campus as a dorm parent. Um, you know, so they really do really get to know our students mm -hmm. as people, which I think is really special. <laughs> and so I think, um, you know, those students that are, are able to let adults into their lives and, and, and you know, collaborate with them and their peers, mm -hmm. I think to have open, honest dialogue in a class and being able to be in that trustful environment is important. Um, students who are willing to take risks and try new things and put themselves out there without being afraid, those are the students I've found over my 18 years here as having most the most success here. Um, do you want to add anything? Yeah, I think that being said, there's also a lot, like the teachers know that people are also shy and like a little bit timid at first. Mm -hmm. And so they'll do their best to give you kind of the best chance at being successful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I would say like I've definitely found more success than I thought I would mm -hmm. that coming mm -hmm. here. Um, I know like just the, like what you were saying, the relationships with the teachers. Like if I was in public school with like a public high school with like, 3,000, 4,000 kids, like, I wouldn't even know who my teacher was, my teacher yeah. wouldn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. So I think the fact that, like, we have advisors, we have grade level teams, mm -hmm. I mean, I know all the administrators, and that would only happen in public school if I were to get in trouble, like, every yeah. day. <laughs> so, um, I think that that's, like, my favorite part and why I, mm -hmm. I personally, like, love it here is because, like, I know that the faculty, and, like, just everyone around, but specifically the faculty, they're here to help us succeed, yeah. and for us, mm -hmm. you know, make that next step in our life, whether that be college, or whatever. So yeah, I think that that's definitely great. And I found a lot of teachers who I could like connect with academically, personally. And I just, that's my favorite part is yeah. knowing the teachers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Good, thank you. All right then, other questions coming in? <laughs> Thanks for the questions, yeah, everyone. Thank you. Great, great job. What qualities do you look for in the application process? Yeah, so, um, you know, my approach to the application is really looking at the whole student. Um, I actually don't write, like to read an application until everything is in. Um, so the application, in addition to doing an interview, um, we do require um, a parent recommendation. You know, parents are our students' first teacher, so it's, you know, really helpful for us to gain your insight on your child's um, education and what you're viewing as important in their next um, step in school. Um, there's a student part of it with short essays. Um, and then we ask for current English, math, and school recommendations along with the transcript and that testing. So, you know, we understand that, you know, I would say probably, you know, half of our students are coming from public school and the other half are coming from um, private feeder schools. And so, you know, sometimes teachers don't really know the students in public school and, and kind of just view them as maybe not as engaged, whereas yeah. another teacher who really clicks and connects with someone, mm -hmm you know, their recommendation might, might be quite different. So we're gathering all that information in the interview. So it's really fun for us to see how these recommendations yeah. are coming in and um, seeing that. So again, really we're working, looking for students who just, you know, want to be in an environment that's engaging, um, that want to find success, that have passions, that, you know, really bottom line are hard workers, right? That they're pluggers and really dig in. Um, you know, so that's, those are really the intricacies of what we're looking for. Do they have to have a perfect transcript? No, because what I talked to, to before <laughs> that, you know, we all have strengths and, and weaknesses, you know, um, you know, we all have subjects we prefer yes. than others. So we understand that, you know, you're not going to have that, that perfect transcript and, you know, but we are looking for students with interest. Um, one of the things that's different about coming to a school like CHCH versus a private school is that we do have a, a mandatory um, co-curricular program. Um, so you are here for a good amount of the day from, you know, classes start for us at 8 in the morning and go until about 3 or 2.15 depending on the day. And then you do have to do an after school activity, um, which is tons of variety for that. Um, but you are here until about 5, 5.30. Um, so you can choose anything from our athletics program. We have um, really fantastic soccer, volleyball, softball, lacrosse, wrestling. Um, I say that? Yeah, yeah, golf, um, um, ultimate frisbee, cross country, cross country yeah. Yeah. rock climbing. I don't, I don't want Mr. Andrew Chow to be mad at me. Um, baseball. baseball, ultimate frisbee. Yep. Um, yeah, and yeah. then um, and then we have our visual arts classes are incorporated during the day. So you could take one of our mini exciting classes from painting to 3D design, um, sculpting. sculpting. Yeah. 
theater. Music. Theater, theater, theater class. Theater class. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then after school, each trimester, we put on a performance, um, which we usually do a musical in the winter, which was, which is actually this year, the, Shrek. Yeah, Shrek, which yeah. is really cool. Um, so the point of that is for students, you know, you work really hard during the academic day. And so we want you to have some time to breathe before you have to go home and do homework. Um, <laughs> you know, it's a chance to, to meet new friends. You know, what's really cool is that, you know, even though we're a school of 180, you can be friends with 180 students, yeah, right? Yeah. The <laughs> freshmen are friends with seniors. And through those co-curricular programs, you're doing things with common interests. The faculty um, or some staff might be um, program directors for those areas. So you get to see your teachers in a different way, too, yeah. with also a common interest, which is really cool. So um, so that's something a little bit different. Um, so if you are looking at an independent school, most do have that requirement. Um, you know, and if you have something that you love to do outside of what we offer, um, we've had students in the past who are horseback riders, um, competitive swimmers, um, you know, so you could do an independent study for one yeah. trimester. Yeah. So right now, since like, you know, college has been introduced <laughs> junior year, um, I've like kind of thought about it and I either, you know, want to go into, you know, something medical. So I'm doing an internship with our athletic trainer right now. And I am enjoying that so much. So just the opportunity that I like that I can do that is mm -hmm. just it's great. So like it shows like real world experience yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of flexibility with that to do yeah. an independent study, create a curriculum, you know, if there's something that we don't offer here, um, you know, that there there is the opportunity to continue to expand and challenge the yeah. students that have there. So that's a great question. Mm -hmm. All right. I know we're almost at our one o'clock spot, so yeah, I think we can um, um, wrap up. Yeah, so we, um, is there five day or seven day boarding available? Yeah. yeah, it's the last question. So as I mentioned before, we do have a day and boarding program. Um, you know, and our, our day students can come for weekend mm -hmm. activities. So, um, so what's nice is, again, there's flexibility there. So the way our boarding program works is that we have a study hall for two hours, which is structured from 7.30 to 9.30, Sunday through Thursday, Thursday night. Ninth and 10th graders have it in a classroom and 11th and 12th graders in your rooms, yes. right? Yeah. Um, so it teaches you independence and have that structure. Um, we have students, again, from around the globe, nationally, but we also have some local boarders, and Sonia is a local boarder. Yes. She started off as day and transitioned to boarding. Yeah. Um, but then we also have, you know, a number of weekend activities. We probably offer about 10 to 12 different activities throughout yeah. the weekend, both on and off campus, mm -hmm. um, as well as community service opportunities. So those are um, available for day students as well. So day student can essentially be here most of the day. They yeah. can come early for breakfast, stay yeah. for study hall, stay yeah. for dinner, study yeah. hall. Yeah. Um, you know, you just have to leave when it's time for lights out. Basically. So <laughs> yeah. So do you want to talk? So we, and then students are allowed to um, on most weekends go home if they want mm -hmm. to after their Friday after school activity and just be back Sunday for evening study hall or stay part of the weekend and go home on a Sunday afternoon and have dinner with family. Um, so we don't really necessarily have five or seven day boarding, but we just have you know the flexibility within that. Do you want to talk about? Your experience as you know boarding student and then day student and how you can get involved in the community yeah, so i know as a day student i actually live only like five minutes away so <laughs> the commute is really easy yeah. but definitely during um the theater productions when it's getting close to the play i'll find myself staying later having dinner and then um i don't do that super often but when i do I kind of end up sitting with like different people than I would mm -hmm. during the regular day and yeah. I'm like oh I forgot how much like fun this is yeah. and how it's like it just feels so different mm -hmm. um, so it's a really great opportunity to have where you can kind of have a flexibility to always be on campus mm -hmm. yeah in boarding I feel like I started out as a day student freshman year um, but I transitioned to boarding as a sophomore and I love boarding it's just it's so cool like just being here all the time, yes, it's school, but I feel like boarding kind of brings in like a different element because like, yes, you are responsible for yourself. Like there are dorm parents, um, but you know, I'm responsible of sitting down, getting my homework done, you know, doing my laundry, whatever. So I feel like that has definitely like matured me and also prepared me so much for college because yeah, I know be like the most, I know like my, like a lot of people, you know, they have a, a trouble, you know, going into the dorm because it's, it's so different than living at home, but I feel like yeah. my transition smooth. Yep. Just like how, to, how to live with someone. Yeah, space. Definitely. Yeah, structure definitely. your time and mm -hmm. get yourself I would say out. Yeah. The boarding community is also very like tight knit. And I wouldn't say like, you know, day students and boarding students are like, you know, too different. Mm -hmm. Like all of us are friends. 
you know, I have friends, day students, boarding students. So I would say that it's like one cohesive community, yeah, but also no like, you know, since the boards are here, you know, more than day students, I, I would say like, you know, we're all really close with each other in the dorm and like, it's fun, you know, it's fun like being, like learning to live with someone. So mm -hmm. I really enjoy that, yeah. And I think that's one unique attribute about who we are is that, you know, we are a day, a day school in Waltham, surrounded by so much and close oh, yeah. to Boston and Cambridge. Mm -hmm. But then we also have that boarding component built into it. So as a day student, again, this could be your school yeah. seven days a week if you wanted to. So that's, you know, kind of a unique thing about who we are. So, yeah. One more, one more question. Yeah, we have time for one more. We have a question from Richard Maddams. He said, are there any sections of the application that you pay particular attention to? Yeah, to be honest, we, we, we look at the entire application. Um, I think every every piece of it is, is equally important. Um, you know, in particular, you know, the teacher recommendations are, are helpful when, when a student has a connection with that teacher. We understand that when they're in an environment where, you know, they're finding success, are they hardworking? Are they able to collaborate? How are they with their peers? Um, you know, that's important. But I, I would say, again, the most important piece to me is, is the interview and really bringing that application to life, um, you know, and to really have time to meet with a student and get to know their, their personalities and also their interest in what type of school they're looking for. Um, I think there's so many great options in, in the Boston area. There's a number of different boarding schools. Um, so again, it's really all about best fit um, yes. at the end of the day. You know, there's a lot of information you can gather from a website or a view book, but until you step on campus and really get to know the culture and climate and the people, um, I think that's really important. And yeah. then how does that student and family fit into our community? So, and I, yeah, that's, that's I, like, I would say for me, like, you know, I, I knew about Chapel Hill, you know, I filled out the application and then like my tours when I was like, I can see myself yeah. here, you know, mm -hmm. like that was really just the, like the, the decision yeah, yeah. same for just me being here. Yeah. yeah and I really feel like going through the process for high school has also helped me for college like I know that I've, I've loved this environment so much for four years that I know I want to pursue that in the future in a college mm -hmm. so great and I think too I have different members of the admissions committee so it's not just me reading an application so I have um, you know whoever did the interview is part of the committee as well as um, you know, our director of the skills and academic support program. And then it could be a class dean or a ninth and 10th grade program director, depending on the grade. So I always have at least two people from the academic side of the house reading an application. Um, so that way, you know, they, they are in particular looking for specific things from their program areas. Um, you know, but ultimately, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking at that holistic approach to an applicant. So great question. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, thank you for joining us this thank afternoon. I appreciate you. you taking some time. Thank you to Sonia and Elena for, yeah. for being on camera with us. Yeah. 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 Thanks so much.